No. N no. What do you mean five shiny Pokemon battled? I've only caught four shiny Pokemon. I have my shiny Drifblim, my shiny Frostlass, my shiny Dunsparce, and then I picked up a random snow run while recording a video. When did I... Was it a raid? When, when did I miss the fifth shiny Pokemon? Oh. Oh, thank God. So, we have an update as to some of, like, the weird things going on in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and also just some other, like, news that's kind of come out while everyone's been buried in the game, and that is what this video is about. So if you enjoy it, or if it helps out in any way, don't forget to leave a like, share with your friends, comment your thoughts down below. I've seen a lot of people notice that the shiny Pokemon battle count on their trainer cards has risen and wonder if they missed a shiny. But you should know, this oddly titled count actually includes any shiny Pokemon you've evolved. I caught it as a Drifloon, it became a Drifblim. The world makes sense, I don't have to live in fear anymore. Funny thing is, this doesn't always work. What? And then we have James Turner tweeting out Art of Mousehole. Now, whenever he tweets out our Art of a Pokemon, it usually means he designed it. So right now it's really looking like James Turner is behind Mousehold, but while I have everyone's attention with like all of this Pokemon update stuff because we've got quite a few things to cover, also I need to reload the pages. So yeah, we've got, we've got a good amount of things to cover today, but while I have everyone's attention, I need to dispel the stupidity that always exists in the Pokemon community. James Turner al already left Game Freak when Scarlet and Violet were in development. That is wrong. James Turner left in May. The game has been in development for years. That means development wrapped in May. You don't need any more Pokemon designers when everything's designed, made, and being tested and finalized. That's how game development works. So yeah, James Turner had his hand in this pie, as well as wh whatever else is going on. So we're going to have to see how much it changes with Generation 10 designs. But now the question is, how many Pokemon did James Turner design in Generation 9? Other things going on, we have Sprigatito getting its own little special in the Pokemon anime, so it seems like that's going to happen with the other starters in the coming weeks and stuff. It was pretty cool, it was pretty fun, but yeah, it's kind of interesting to see the transition. Also, there's like a lot of speculation, not a leak, not a rumor, but just speculation that Ash will no longer be the protagonist because of the names episodes and how grand the adventure has been, and he's done it all now. He went from regional champion to world champion, so, how that adventure continues, who knows. We have, uh, data. Game data, that's kind of interesting. Mousehold, Family of Three, and Da Dunsparce, three segments. So wouldn't that be Da Da Dunsparce? Are even rarer than we thought. So it's thought to be like, one in 25 odds. So we had Kurt, you know, similar to Wurmple, two new species that evolve based on a random factor. Unlike Wurmple, which is 50-50, evolution heavily favors the outcome one in 25 Oops, got it just a little wrong. It's actually 1 in 100 to get Mousehold Family of 3 randomly or the Dunsparce 3 segment. To clarify, the 1 in 100 only governs the evolution decision. So that is if you have a Dunsparce and Tandem Mouse and then evolve them through the in-game means. Not the chance of any wild or raid encounters for these Pokemon. Evolution is based on the encryption constant, which can't be changed. Mousehold Family of 3 is in 4-star Terra Raids. Rate looks to be 1 in 88 of all 4-star raids, 1 in 87 of all 4-star violet raids. So, little bit of numbers and math between the games. Rate of 4-star raids increases in the post-game. Uh, interesting. And then the 3-segment Dunsparce that doesn't exist in the wild. So, good luck evolving that. Now, the problem here is that 3-segment Dunsparce, to me, looks... Gross. I, I don't like the segmenty look to it, and Dunsparce is just better designed somehow. So I'm going to keep my Dunsparce, which is also kind of funny because, yeah, I have a shiny Dunsparce. But now this is going to be an Eviolite boy, and we're going to see how he does in competitive. Um, could, like, test. Actually, I'm going to save and test Evolve and see what we got. All right, so let's see what we got. Uh, that's just two segment. All right. I, I was like, I was trying to, like, make. Look at what we have, but okay, so we don't have the Giga Rare Crazy Dunsparce. Back to Pokemon news after this not scheduled break. So yeah, we got that. Um, fixed Terra Pokemon are not considered static encounters and are not shiny locked. So when I did my Terra location guide, I didn't state if they were shiny locked or not. 
and this information has been out for a couple of days. Now, this also, like, I'm kind of a part of this, but also everyone's kind of a part of this since there's different ways Pokemon are casually classified that, you know, a static encounter in the game is something you have to walk up to and press A to interact with, like the legendary Pokemon. Um, and that means that the Pokemon is going to be considered special and shiny locked. But I've also called, like, just static spawns, you know, Pokemon that are fixed. So, I mean, we should call these fixed spawns, but they've been called static in the past, and even uh, Cerebi had them classified as static for a while. So, it's like the fixed spawns, the Pokemon that are always just there in the same spot in the overworld. There's Terra spawns, but there's also regular spawns. Those can be, those are not shiny locked, because they're not static by the game, even though their location is always static. So, we have that. Fixed symbol encounters have a huge draw distance to appear across the map, so you have to work harder to hunt them. Some Pokemon that run may act similarly. So sometimes, if you've like gone to a location where there's supposed to be a fixed Pokemon spawn, or one of those Terra Pokemon, and then like they're not there, they might have already despawned and run away, or they might have like moved to another location. You might notice that like when you arrive, the little glowy mark actually like bounces to another location, and then the Pokemon's like a couple feet away or something. That's because when they spawn in, they start behaving off of the spawn from the long draw distance. Got some other things. This is mostly about like item acquisition. I guess I could just make like, hey, here's how you get the rare items. Most people have figured it out by now, but just either through gameplay or like stray tweets like this. Numerous people ask me if the Love Ball is obtainable in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Yes, it is. Love Ball is only obtainable through auctions. And it's also stupid exp expensive. Same thing for something like the Dream Ball. And a Beast Ball is only attainable through Pokedex completion with 400 volumes. That doesn't, that isn't accurate though, because I got a Beast Ball from the Ace Academy Tournament. I don't know if you're supposed to get one for your first, but it doesn't seem like it. And like, yeah, the first Ace Academy Tournament did. I got a Beast Ball. Is that the most giga rare crazy thing ever? Like how one of the first times I went to Cerulean Cave, I got a Master Ball? Like, okay, I guess I'm just lucky like that. And I also did end up with my favorite shiny Pokemon on my casual playthrough. But, um, yeah, even according to the list of items, there's no Beast Ball to be found. So I don't know if this is data mined or just kind of a guess based off of the history of what we've had in Pokemon games. Where it's like, yeah, Gold Bottle Cap, usually around 1%. Other rare spawns, 1%. Then, like, 2% and then filler percent kind of tracks. But maybe this, like, I, I haven't seen any direct out of mind of this, maybe. So this could just be going off of the received items and trying to fill it in based on suggested rarity. Or the Beast Ball is like 0.1% chance and something really weird happened. I don't know. So a couple things still trying to be figured out about the game. But we do have some updates. I would consider the James Turner one significant. And then the anime, that's also kind of showing like Pokemon is still going on. Things are happening, but also even days later, week after the game comes out, we are still finding out how some of the odds and numbers and extra little bits work. And then just like trying to accumulate, you know, again, you're too busy playing the game to know everything going on and then accumulate every little detail that, you know, some people know this, some people know that. Bring it all together. Comment yours down below. What little thing have you learned? about the games and then yeah we got some good stuff so guys enjoy the video hope you all have a nice day thank you very much for watching